Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, special public hearing of the East Lime Water and Sewer Commission to order. If you all would, please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will read the, the first thing I'll do is I'll read the uh, Notice of Public Hearing, Town of East Lyme Water and Sewer Commission, Notice of Public Hearing. The East Lyme Water and Sewer Commission will hold a public hearing on March 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at the East Lyme Town Hall, 108 Pennsylvania Avenue, Niantic, Connecticut, to consider the following. Application to determine, for determination of sewer capacity filled by, filed by Pelletier Niantic LLC regarding the property set forth in the application and identified on the East Lime Tax Assessor's map as Little Dodge Pond Property Map Lot 16.4-83, Big Dodge Pond Property Map Lot 16.4-82, Front Lots Right of Way Map Lot 16.2-67, Gride P Property Map Lot 16.2-69, Ice House Right of Way, Map Lot 16.2 slash 61, 194 Pennsylvania Avenue, Map Lot 16.2 slash 63, 196 Pennsylvania Avenue, Map Lot 16.2 slash 64, and 200 Pennsylvania Avenue, Map Lot 16.2 slash 66. Copies of the application are available for viewing Public viewing in the offices of the town clerk and the water and sewer department, Kevin Surrey, chairman. This was posted and in the newspaper and published and posted in the town clerk's office. And again, tonight is only to determine whether or not uh, our for presentation on the capacity regarding uh, the proposed or pers pr pr prospective project. It has nothing to do with any approval as far as is this the right place for this? What are the impacts of traffic? This strictly deals with. Uh, uh, water and sewer capacity. We're going to have a presentation by the uh, applicant and then it will be followed up by a pr uh, presentation by uh, our utility engineer, Ben North. So, um, uh, Attorney Sweeney, you're going to, okay. Yeah. And if you'll just state your name and your affiliation with the project, please. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Terrific. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Bill Sweeney. I'm a partner and a land use attorney with the law firm of Tobin Carberry, uh, just over the line in New London, Connecticut. Thank you for inviting uh, our team here tonight. Uh, I'm appearing on behalf of Pelletier Niantic LLC, which is a senior housing developer based in New York. Uh, joining me tonight are some familiar faces. I have with me uh, attorney Ted Harris and our project engineer, Bob Fanner, who you'll be hearing uh, from tonight as well. As you're aware, Attorney Harris is the Connecticut counsel for Pelletier Niantic, uh, but he has asked me to assist him again tonight uh, as he has a medical condition that's affecting his ability to speak. Uh, in January, as you may recall, we appeared before this commission and provided a brief presentation on our application. Uh, as you know, our client has submitted an application to the Water and Sewer Commission for a determination of adequacy of sewer capacity for proposed senior housing development that was going to span about 37 acres of land, uh, a number of properties along Pennsylvania Avenue, which are currently owned by the Trachis family. Uh, this application was submitted to the commission pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes, uh, Section 7-246A, Subsection A, Subsection 1, and your local water and sewer regulations. Uh, in response, uh, after the January meeting, this commission scheduled this public hearing on the matter, which uh, you are entitled to do under the state statutes. And so tonight we're going to briefly give the same pre basic presentation uh, that we gave to you uh, in January, but we're going to add a few additional um, uh, details uh, for the record. Uh, as we had discussed uh, last time we were before you, we've been working with your staff in the water and sewer department uh, since last fall, reviewing concept designs for this important economic development project. And in particularly been working with your staff on designating appropriate sewage capacity calculations for the various uses that are envisioned and proposed. 
Uh, Mr. Fanner is going to walk you through the proposed concept site plans again in a moment. Uh, but the project, which we are currently calling Niantic Village at Dodge Pond, would contain an integrated mix of senior housing um, units, amenity spaces, and supporting medical uses. In addition to the 304 active adult and family visitor units, there are proposed 125 assisted living units and 25 specialty memory care units as part of the project. The project also proposes a variety of very attractive amenities, including both indoor and outdoor recreation areas, uh, an on-site medical office building with urgent care, and other medical services that will be available to the general public. The fundamental concept here uh, and behind the project is to create a high quality residential development exclusively for seniors here in East Lyme that provides what we call a continuum of care within the same community, allowing residents to come and join this community, age in place, and receive convenient medical services close to their home. The project, as Mr. Fanner will describe to you, will be served by a 10-inch water main in Pennsylvania Avenue and a new sewer connection that will ultimately gravity feed back down Pennsylvania Avenue toward Main Street. One of the most critically important aspects of the project, and one that I'm going to try to stress tonight to you, is that, this, that a project of this nature and size does not get built, nor does it go online overnight. This is a multi-year phased development that still needs local zoning and state traffic approvals before construction can even start, let alone be completed. Due to the reality of the permitting timeline, the construction of the first phases of this project are likely the better part of more than two years away. And any sewer capacity demand will not likely peak until at least three to four years from now. I think that's a really important consideration. Uh, and it's an important reality that needs to be in the forefront of your deliberations tonight and as you review our application. And that's because there's going to be a substantial time delay between now when we're planning and designing the project and when sewer capacity that we're seeking will actually be needed for the residents and uses in this project. Obviously though, we need an allocation now to move forward with final design and permitting of the project. This is a multi-million dollar effort and we need some assurance from the town that there is an allocation that's been provided. As I mentioned in January, we've been working closely with your staff on detailed capacity calculations for the project to determine what we believe to be an extremely conservative estimate for overall demand once the project does go online. We've provided in our application materials a detailed table um, based on the discussions we had with your staff that substantiates our request for an allocation of 110,000 gallons per day for the project. The individual capacity demand for each use in the project has been assessed and was based on very specific design flows that have already been approved by the state. But in some instances, as it is allowed by both state law and your regulations, we modified those design flows based on metered flows for similar uses. For the active adult units um, that we're proposing as part of this project, which comprise a vast majority of the proposed dwelling units, we used collected data over three years from the AHEPA project here in town to more accurately estimate the design flows for this type of unit occupancy. That being said, we still feel our estimates are very conservative. For example, the active adult units that are being proposed as part of this project are technically two bedroom units, despite the fact that within these types of senior residences, the second bedroom is almost exclusively used as a bonus room or a study. It's not for residential use. In reality, if the second bedroom was treated as what it will actually be used for by the future residents of this project, our demand of 110,000 would easily be reduced as much as an additional 24,000 gallons a day. However, in our effort to be ultra conservative uh, in our calculations, we still treat these second bedrooms as actually fully occupied bedroom units. Um, it's something that just something that's just not going to occur in the development, but it's our way of making sure that we have a cushion in our numbers. As a result, our base calculation of 93, day, 93 gallons per day per unit, which already includes a 50% safety factor per your regulations, is doubled and it's increased to 190 gallons a day 
per unit, again, assuming that second bedroom would actually be a residential be bedroom that's used as such. Like I, likewise, and Mr. Fanner is going to show you that we have some family visitor units that we're proposing on the site. Um, these will be only occupied periodically by visitors to the senior housing development, but we're treating them for sewer capacity purposes as if they're permanent housing lived in year-round by permanent residences. Similar conservative cushions have been worked and baked into our um, calculations throughout our application and, and for the other uses that are being proposed, and we've done that in close consultation with your staff. The bottom line tonight is that we think that the 110 gallons per day that we're requesting as an allocation is significantly more than we're actually going to need to meet our realized demand. But again, uh, this is a demand that we don't actually physically need for several more years. We're here tonight to, to get that allocation set aside so that we can move forward with the design of the project and what is going to be a long permitting process. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Bob Fanner. Uh, Bob's got some plans that he's going to show. You've seen them before. We're going to enter them as exhibits into the record of the hearing. And then I'm going to come back with just some concluding remarks after he's done. Okay. Okay, Bob, when you do that, it's perfectly fine to point them towards the, the crowd because we all have <coughs> the inserts and we've seen it before. So, so they get a look at what you're pre presenting. Ben, could you make sure he has a copy? Uh, okay, go ahead, Bob. I don't know if you're going to go around there because you'd need the microphone if you're going to go around the corner. So I looked it for the crowd to see. Okay. I know what it shows. You know what it shows. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm uh, G. Robert Fenner, project engineer. Uh, I'm an engineer in town for a few years. Uh, this project, uh, for me, is is as as a lifelong resident of the town, a beautiful project for the town. Uh, and I was lucky enough to, 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 to get attached to this and help design it. I, I, again, I'll, uh, as the plan shows, uh, we have a building in the front for, for uh, assisted living, 150 beds, 20, uh, 150 beds, and then 25 beds or 26 beds for uh, memory care. It also has a building for uh, air urgent care and radiology. Those are the buildings in front that will, that will be built first, along with, uh, we plan, well, it's about 4,200 feet of sewer from the Trachis property to Main Street where we have to tie in. Uh, and in the back of this land on, on Dodge Pond, uh, is, uh, what did they have, what, 304 units on maybe 13 buildings, I think about 18 units a building, and, uh, and that'll be uh, the first stage for senior housing. Then they can, like you said, as they get older and need help, they can move to assisted living in the front, and then the final phase, if they're lucky enough, is the memory care. Uh, there's also going to be in the back for all, all residents, and, and again, it's open to the public, is, is, is there's a meeting hall, a cafeteria, retail shops, therapy area, a gym, a little movie theater, and the office staff. That's in that complex, which is... Uh, and uh, I'll go this sewer again that uh, we're running in at no cost to the town is uh, has uh, I think I, I count approximately 26 businesses that will have sewer available to them including the town hall and the uh, community church and approximately I don't I couldn't count the amount of homes that would make the sewers available um, 
I will just show for the audience. All right, this, has a, this is what it looks like from Pennsylvania Avenue, although it's set back about 150 feet. And this, one is, isn't it? This is the, uh, this is the sewer going from the Baker property all the way down. So I, uh, that's that's all I, I have to say. I have any questions, like always. Okay, but, but there'll be a public uh, hearing, yeah. so we don't get to ask questions today. We're just here to no, listen. No, no, but they might have to ask some questions. Well, we're going to have uh, Ben do the presentation for us. And, and Attorney Sweeney, do you have anything to ask? Yeah, just a couple Okay, sure. It's fine. And then we'll make sure everybody gets to present first. Just for the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, those um, these can be entered as exhibits into the record. I think Attorney um, Zamarka asked me to make sure that I do that, so okay. I, I would submit these as exhibits. We'll, we'll take them the house. Great. Okay. Um, you know, before I turn it over, and we are available for questions if if that's appropriate in this in this um, venue um, tonight. Um, in conclusion tonight, though, I do just want to note a couple things uh, before I turn it over to your staff and. And that is that we strongly believe this allocation request meets the criteria for approval as provided in your local regulations in a number of respects. Um, and I think uh, Bob hinted at this before, that the extension of the sewer down Pennsylvania Avenue is not only going to serve this project and this property, but it's going to bring the ability to have connections to dozens of other properties designated for sewer service along that corridor. It's going to enhance their value, and it's potentially going to help abate pollution problems where people have failing septic systems that need to tie in. Uh, based on our discussions with staff, uh, additional capacity to serve this project exists or will exist in the near future. Um, we believe safe and adequate connections and extensions can be made to serve the project. And granting this allocation is going to do something really important for the community. It's part in your regulations. This is one of the criteria you have to look at is it will help the community diversify housing opportunities in the town of East Lyme, especially for seniors, uh, which is consistent with the town plan of conservation and development. Now, we do recognize and acknowledge there needs to be further review of your allocation data. It was something that we talked about in January, and I know your staff will likely talk about as well. Um, but we would submit to you that we believe that there are allocations previ previously provided to other users and other properties in town um, that um, uh, that have been um, overstated or underutilized. Um, we also believe um, there are legitimate opportunities to increase your capacity in the near future, especially when you look at the timeline of this project going out. Um, literally three to four years before our peak demand is actually physically needed. And that's three or four years that you'll have the time to continue to build your capacity, um, not just for this project, but for the community as a whole. Our allocation request has been designed to be intentionally conservative, uh, and we're going to, through that, direct development to an area of the town that's best suited to support additional investment and infrastructure. Uh, I would just close with these last thoughts. Is East Lyme must increase its sewer capacity, and it must provide for additional allocations for not only the Niantic, um, uh, the Niantic uh, Village project, uh, but m other important economic development projects and initiatives that are going to come before this town in the, in the coming years. Uh, the town cannot just simply close its doors. Uh, you need increased sewer capacity in you know, one way or another to, f f to fuel future growth and the success of the community uh, in the years to come. Uh, we think our request is reasonable. We think it's compliant with the criteria set forth in your regulations. And I think the, the town is uniquely positioned. It has the time and the opportunities to address the overall sewer capacity needs in a comprehensive approach over the next few years, well before the requested capacity that we're requesting tonight is actually needed. Um, so again, I thank you for your time and attention tonight. My team will be available if any member of the board has any questions about the allocation request. Thank you. Thank you. Ben North, who is our utility engineer. Ben. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Water and Sewer Commission. Good to see you again so soon. <laughs> so 
my presentation tonight is going to be a little bit of a uh, outlook on our history in the East Line sewer system as well as our present conditions. And I should stop first and say um, I've been the uh, utilities engineer for East Line since 2019. Um, I've worked with Brad Cargill, my pre predecessor, um, and uh, together we oversaw the construction of a lot of new development in town. Um, just recently, Costco, Gateway Phase 1 and 2, Rocky Neck Village, and uh, the uh, villages. Um, so we've had a number of large developments come to town recently, um, and uh, we're at a position now where we really don't have a lot of capacity left. Um, and I should start by saying and describing a little bit for everyone how the, the system works in East Lyme. East Lyme does not have its own um, wastewater treatment plant. It sends flows to uh, neighboring communities through Waterford and into New London, where it's treated for capacity purposes. Uh, New London has about 10 million gallons of sewer flow that is divided by all three communities. Uh, where East Lyme has about 1.5 million uh, total gallons of capacity. Uh, but of that uh, 1.5 million, about 500,000 um, is, uh, is sequestered by the state of Connecticut for their capacity needs uh, by the Department of Corrections, Department of Environmental Energy Protection, and the uh, Defense Department over at Camp Net. Uh, so that brings our final capacity down to about 1.022 million gallons per day. So just over a million gallons per day. So in my uh, my first uh, slide here, and let me zoom in. Is there a way to so enlarge that a little bit? Yep. Um, or a lot? I didn't, I didn't really want you to see it yet until I was ready to present it. <laughs> uh, so this is our most recent um, sewer data that we have from 2020, um, uh, 2022, I should say. And it outlines you know, the, the available capacity that we've had over time. It looks at the state's capacity, and it looks at the amount of capacity that we've used. Um, you can can see by the uh, slide there's there are percentages of capacity that are left by the state, and capacities that we have left over uh, for our town. Um, let me go to the next one that may be able to see a little bit better. So this brings us to this this look back period where we have a uh, calculation where we looked at the, the average remaining capacity over the past five years. Okay, where 1.022 or 1,022,000 gallons is our starting capacity. Um, 708,000 is, is what we, our average usage is. And again, this is our, our use is just with the town, not, not considering the state's flows. Um, and that brings us to about 313,000 gallons of remaining capacity. Um, so we, that, that's our starting point for assessing what we have left at this point. And when, when we do that, we have to look at the construction projects that we've already uh, approved for construction and capacities that we've already outlined. Um, projects that have not even come online yet, but we have approved. And we also have to look at um, the areas of town that are already sewered um, that people have paid sewer assessments or they have an opt-in sewer assessment where they have either a building or there is vacant land where there's areas in town that have not connected to the sewer system yet. So we had to do a calculation based on the, uh, the buildings that are existing right now that are on septic but could tie into sewer in the areas that are also in assessed areas that uh, are vacant properties but also may tie in. So we need to take all these things into account when we look at how much capacity we have left. This is the five year look back and as you can tell based on just the amount of capacity that we have left after we look at the 153,000 that we have already allocated, the 21,000 that's currently under construction um, and this is uh, 76,000 for buildings that have been assessed but are not connected and an estimate, and again this is an estimate because we don't know exactly what would be built on these vacant properties, but an estimate of what is remaining um, in, the, in the capacity that we have left. Um, 
I'll take a minute to describe our our usage of, of how we calculate capacity. We do that based on the uh, Connecticut uh, 2018 subsurface disposal guidelines. That's an exhibit that we have in our record. And that is a way that we have used to describe the amount of capacity needed for buildings. Um, ever since I've been here and um, my predecessor Brad Cargill also used. Um, and that's how we normally treat how much capacity we think is a building is going to need. Um, every uh, bedroom, for instance, is 150 gallons per day of capacity that we need. So I'm going to move over to the two-year because, as I stated before, there's been a, a large building boom in town recently, and typically I would go with a five-year look back on, on, a, uh, on a, uh, a situation where we saw capacity was remaining roughly the same over the years, but We've really seen in the last two years or so that sewer capacity has dwindled pretty quickly. Um, so now we have a situation where we have about 255,000 left uh, of total capacity, which gives us negative 57,000 gallons of capacity if we were to take into account the, the current outlays that we've already established. So just to move that to the next sheet where we talk about the impacts that this development would have on the remaining sewer capacity, obviously the situation does not get any better. Um, 110,000 of gallons of capacity is needed for the Nihantic development. Um, and in addition, staff was asked to look at the amount of capacity that would be required if the, the sewer main was built on Pennsylvania Ave that would then connect to this development. Um, and we put that at about 37,000 gallons of capacity. So those are, those are homes right now, including Town Hall, that uh, would benefit from a sewer connection and would expect to be able to tie in if uh, we moved forward with, with this development. Um, I also have a number of other exhibits that I wanted to enter into the record. Um, uh, just a total of the summary of the 2022 flows, a sewer allocation of the study of the last five years and of the last two years, uh, our capacity regulations, uh, the developer's applicant uh, application, obviously, um, and a breakdown of the uh, analysis of the five-year and the two-year uh, allocation study. I've also included five years of sewer flows for the record and the uh, day paper publications for the public hearing. Any, no. Anything else? No, thank you. Yes. For housekeeping purposes, if, if Mr. North is going to put this to the public, we should probably go through and put on the record. Oh, when go to the mic, if you could, Attorney Zamarco. Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Evening, folks. Mark Zamarco, Waller, Smith & Palmer, Town Council. Um, just for record-keeping purposes, uh, we want to make sure we've got a clean record here and make sure we have all the exhibits entered. Um, I've been trying to keep track of them uh, as we went on and just so the uh, recording secretary can get these down as well. Uh, exhibit one being the public hearing notice, exhibit two, the publication notices, uh, exhibit three, the application, exhibit four, uh, the site plan drawings that uh, council and Mr. Fanner referred to, exhibit five uh, was the 2022 sewer data, exhibit six, was the chart showing the five-year look back. Exhibit seven is the subsurface disposal guidelines. Exhibit eight is the chart showing the two-year look back. Exhibit nine is the chart showing the Nahantic development, uh, how that plays into all that. And then I'm gonna ask Mr. North again to make sure we've got the rest after that. Uh, after that I had exhibit 10 is showing the 2022 sewer flows, is that correct? Okay, Exhibit 11 was our regulation, yep. and then what did we have after that? Five years of data. And five years worth of sewer flows. Well, we can, if, if I'd rather have more than one than none at all. So Exhibit 12 would be uh, five-year sewer flow data. Okay. okay. Have, uh, I'm sorry. 
week, I think, to five year and two year, whatever else was. Is that, is that yeah. it? Okay. Okay. Uh, Attorney Sweeney, have we missed anything? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, that will conclude the presentations. Now we'll be taking uh, questions uh, from the uh, public. If you, when you're called on, please come up and give us your name and address. You know, it depends upon if your name. Uh, you may have to spell it for Karen, uh, depending upon. Uh, you know how difficult it might be to pronounce or something like that so um and then also uh remember this is on capacity this doesn't go into redeal really the detail of why was this area selected and so forth like that so anybody and please limit your comments or to no more than three minutes and if someone ahead of you says exactly what you're going to say you know you know the you're still welcome to come up but you can also just say you know you're supporting what someone else said and either uh our uh the utility engineer or uh, the uh, developer will try and answer your questions to the best of their ability. Does anyone that would like to come up and make a comment or be heard? Once? Anybody? Okay, please come up and here's your name and address, sir. By the microphone, so yes. Uh, Mark Gwynn. Oh, no, once you get to the microphone. Mark Gwynn. Thank you, sir. G U I N N. Thank you. Um, 21 Lakeview Heights, uh, just behind the development. Right. Uh, I had a question. So you mentioned 150 gallons of bedroom a day. You mentioned a number that was a quite a bit smaller than 150 gallons of bedroom a day for the planning. Can I, I don't understand why the why the rather large discrepancy? Yeah, I can, I can answer that. Okay. Ben. So the uh, the Connecticut subsurface disposal guidelines do start with a baseline of 150 gallons per bedroom per day. Uh, what the applicant is using is also part of the disposal guidelines where a, uh, a similar facility is, uh, is used as a data point um, and uh, three years of that data were used um, and, and uh, Attorney Sweeney had mentioned a HEPA um, uh, were used in that analysis and um, that, that analysis was, was taken as the data and then we added a 50% safety factor to that. Um, which is per the sub, uh, surface disposal guidelines. Attorney Sweeney, anything to add to that? You okay. said it better than I could. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other uh, co questions or comments? There's a woman back there. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, oh, Ann, come on up. Can we ask water capacity questions tonight? Uh, it's water, it, well, this is a water and sewer, sure. sewer capacity, but uh, uh, sure, Ann, go ahead. Come on, give your name. Ann Thurlow, give us your name, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ann Thurlow, 80 Smith Street. I just had a question about the water capacity. If you'll need another water tank or a water tank in town, and if so, would the developer pay for that? Yeah, we, we do not believe we would need another water tank or, or well facility uh, for a construction of this size. Um, it, it will be taxing on our water system as well, um, uh, but we don't think that the, the necessity for a review of this magnitude is needed, uh, such as it is with the sewer capacity. Thank you, Ben. Any other comments or questions? Yes, ma'am, please come up. Mr. Gwynn, thank you. It's always, the, the first one is always the hard one to get up to start the ball rolling, so thank you. Jessica Hoadley, 150 Pennsylvania Avenue. I just want um, some information or clarification. If there are negative um, 204,000, um, how, what happens there? Are you allowed to pay the city of New London to take more? Um, how does that work? Yes, uh, ba based on our agreements, um, we, we have a, a few options that I believe um, we would we either need to ask the state for some of their capacity back that, that they have allocated, um, or we would have to look at the other two towns that are part of our agreement and uh, see if they would like to sell capacity uh, to the town. Uh, but involving that would be a cost not only of the usage of the capacity, but also of the design capacity at the New London plant itself. Other questions? Uh, 
Hi, I'm Aaron Casey. I live at 10 Lakeview Circle. Um, I guess, uh, what does New London have to say about it? What is their capacity? Um, what would the cost be to residents for you know, redoing Pennsylvania Avenue and adding the sewers? Um, it seems like we're, we'd be uh, reliant on New London um, and their capacity in this. And does that put, does that jeopardize the rest of our community uh, for sewer? And water beyond just the, um, you know, paying additional costs towards them to them. Thanks. So based on this agreement, uh, and then it, it's called the Triton Agreement. With for anyone who's interested to look into it, um, New London has 55 percent of that plant's capacity. Waterford has 30, and we have 15. Um, I, I'm not sure what the ramifications would be um, of asking for a capacity from New London, um, but I'll, obviously. It, it appears that the entire area of southeastern Connecticut is going through um, some sort of building boom. Um, we've seen it on Howard Street in New London as well. So um, uh, we would have to find out what, what that type of cost would be. Um, but it would not come cheap, unfortunately. Um, that, that type of capacity is very expensive, typically. And he also asked about costs for the yeah, installation. Yeah, to the town. installation. Oh, yeah, I, I, I should mention that the, the developer is going to be picking up the cost for the installation of the uh, sewer main. So there would be no cost to the town for that portion. That's going to carry on Pennsylvania Correct. So where does it start? Uh, it would start at Main Street and work all of its way up to the development. Other questions? Other questions? Yes, sir. Please come up. I'm not sure how I want to present this, but I'll try my best. John Vilcek, just as it sounds, Four Meadow Street, here in Niantic. I think it was 20, 30 years ago, the state mandated shoreline communities that had excessive sewage uh, in septic systems to uh, put in sewers. We did not have sewers on Main Street. We were not connected. We were completely on our own. Uh, a lot of those sewers went in, but a lot of streets, I guess we ran out of money in the town, off Main Street, Lake Avenue, parts of Hope Street, Joyce Court, Meadow Street, Lake Avenue Extended, uh, did not have sewers installed. I guess my question is, if we're going to consider a massive project, and I said consider this massive, water, sewer, utilities, which we'll talk about in future discussions, what happens to the smaller streets that I live on and my neighbors <coughs> to sacrifice us, even though we may have to pay for it as a town, to accommodate a large uh, facility of this sort? I guess that's it. That's a good question. Um, yeah, unfortunately, based on the present capacity that the town has, this, this would be one of the last uh, major developments that uh, we would be able to uh, uh, um, take into, into our capacity um, that we have remaining. And um, those, those uh, communities would uh, unfortunately need to also uh, have a increased capacity from the sewage treatment plant in New London for us to be able to connect them. There, just to add to that a little bit, I, I think the commission is becoming well aware that there needs to be, and we, we've really tried to deal with this capacity question for quite a while, and we realize that there's going to be a need to expand and request more. The Tritown Agreement does allow us, as time goes on, the capacity to, or the ability to purchase more, but that'll come at an expense. And that's one of the things, the sewer assessment, this isn't something that the taxpayers would have to necessarily, but if you're along the line where the sewers are, are extended is where the, uh, the cost would be. So that's a question that we'll be discussing uh, at the Water and Sewer Commission level over the next several months, because we realize this isn't the last development that wants to come to town. Even a housing development would put a tax on us right now. So it was a very good question, sir. We do realize this is an area we have to address. Other comments? Question. Come up, Charlie. You have to go up to the mic. <laughs> reading this 
report here. Charlie, can you give us your name, Charlie? Your name, Charlie. Chuck Ambulance. There's others, but. And your address? What supposedly is bothering me the most on this here is this capacity reserve for previously approved projects. How many gallons were allotted to that 700 unit that supposedly has been fighting us for the last 20 years? How many gallons? 118,400. How much? 118,400. And when do you expect that to ever come to fruition based on we've been fighting it for 20 some odd years? That would be up to the, that's still being in litigation, Charlie, so we'd have to, no guess. Say on that again? That's still in litigation, so it would be hard to say when that would ever come to, to it's fruition. It's still allocated from what we have reserved. Or by order of the court. The court has ordered that allocation. The other situation I have here is, is existing buildings assessed but not connected. That's like shooting a dart into a wall because we don't know what's going to be there. It could be a commercial venture with no use of water or it could be some venture where it's going to use some water in itself. But the, the thing is it's a time, excuse me, the time frame of all what I'm seeing here. Pre projects previously approved and allocated, 153,000. What's the time frame they were going to build? So uh, one of those uh, is what we just mentioned. Uh, the other is the Pizalia development on North Bridebrook uh, for 30, 35,400 gallons per day that is being constructed right now. Okay. Time frame is something that we have to look at specifically if this town is going to continue to grow the way it's growing. What <coughs> we're supposedly taking as a effect is 130 some odd thousand gallons where the existing buildings assessed but not connected. We don't know when. We got another one here, vacant property, again, that I brought up before. So that you tie those up to 131,000 gallons. Plus, how many gallons was that again for up that 700 units? 118,400. How much? For the fourth time, 118,400. Thank you. I was a little hard to hear. I just wanted to hear it again. And you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Come back. Charlie, what's your address? <laughs> Charlie, what's your address? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he can hear you. Hold Any other comments? <laughs> Any other? Last time? Okay, uh, we are not going to deliberate tonight. Uh, that will be done at our next meeting, which will be March 28th, be in the same room too. Uh, we normally don't televise. I assure you that meeting will be televised and recorded because of the, obviously it, it's an issue of interest to the community, but you're more than welcome to come at that time too. One of the things we will be looking at, and we have talked about, is to possibly, and we'll be discussing that night, is looking at can the state possibly give us some capacity. They haven't liked to do that in the past, although they have. Pine Grove is tied in because the state uh, gave us some of their allocation. Point of Woods is the same thing up in, uh, but that's in Old Lyme, so that you know really doesn't affect, and that again was an order that was mandated by the state to do that. So we have been given that. Uh, we can reach out and ask for that capacity back too. So that's it. But we will be delivering this uh, at our meeting on March 28th. Any other comments at all? Oh, I, I kind of closed the comments, but for you, I'll let it. We'll, we'll take one more. How's that? Come on up. Well, the attorney's going to say something, so we, we can avoid him talking for a minute. So, so uh, let me think about it again. Uh, I'm not sure I remember my thought. Oh, your name, your name again, Jessica please. Jessica Holy, 150 Pennsylvania Avenue. So are you going, once you get all this information, um, are, you, are you going to need that information from New London? Are you going to need an approval from them to go ahead with this? We, uh, I'll let, Joe, do you want to talk to the, tri we have the, there, there's some language in the, or even the attorney can talk to that, but Ben, go ahead. Yeah, there, there is a, uh, there's an opener uh, within five years of the signing of the agreement for discussion on reallocation of flows. Um, but outside that, we would have to speak more to New London. 
and, and we are within that. Waterford. We're a year into the agreement, so we still have to wait a little while before we can do that. Four years, yeah, one plus four, yeah. So, okay, uh, uh, Attorney Zamarka. Yeah. Just real briefly before we close the public hearing, Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind the commission that pursuant to the statute and our regulation, you have 65 days to make a decision on the application. That 65 days uh, ends on March 30th, so I realize the meeting is on the 28th. Uh, if for some reason it looks like we cannot reach a decision on the 28th, um, the applicant can grant uh, extensions of up to 65 days if it if it looks like that's necessary um, at this point obviously we don't know but it might be prudent to uh, possibly after the hearing speak with uh, the applicant and counsel regarding a possible extension if that's necessary just wanted to point out the timelines okay thank you for doing that too okay uh, the, I will take a motion to close the public hearing so moved moves there a second second by Roger all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 Opposed? And then I will take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Thank you all for coming. It, it, it's nice when we said the pledge to hear lots of voices here tonight. So thank you so much for coming tonight. <laughs>